By now, many of you will have seen the popular American YouTube video by Mark Dyes, in which he stands on a city sidewalk and offers passers by a free gift. They may choose between a 10-ounce silver bar or a large Hershey's candy bar. Each taker chooses the candy, most of them with no deliberation. The only taker who seems to hesitate at all soon decides on the candy, as I don't have any way to do anything with the silver. Behind them is a coin shop. Mr. Dice offers to take the silver bar inside if she wishes, but she's uninterested and takes the candy. The 10-ounce silver bar is presently valued at about $230, the Hershey's bar at about $2. Note, if you have not seen the video, please check the link on the description box below. You'll take the chocolate bar. Who needs a 10-ounce bar of silver? Right? Have a good day. Mr. Dice doesn't comment in the video as to what lesson might be learned from this, but an obvious one would be that Americans, or at least those who reside in his hometown of San Diego, California, are prone to prefer instant gratification over something of substantially greater, but delayed value. If this is his intent, he succeeded well in his light-hearted, but instructive video. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you've learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. Since the 1950s, much of the world has perceived Americans as being on easy street, and in recent decades, the US government has fueled American complacency through a consciousness of easy money and entitlement. And so, Americans are often perceived by those outside the US as being somewhat insulated, spoiled, naive, and short-sighted. But, if this is true, Americans certainly aren't alone. Much the same exists in Europe, Canada, and quite a few other countries that have, over recent decades, followed the American socio-economic model. Trouble is, all that easy money and entitlement exists, only as long as a source for the freebies exists. Unfortunately, the idea that freebies are free, is inaccurate. Freebies of any description must be paid for by someone. In business, freebies are sometimes provided as loss leaders to attract more business. They therefore become a line item on the monthly balance sheet, a cost of doing business expense. The business hopes to make the loss back through sales generated by the loss leader. But, when governments hand out freebies, no sales will be generated, so the loss will not be recovered. When governments hand out freebies, the cost is paid with tax revenues. And when taxes have been raised to the point that further increases would be difficult without inciting rebellion, governments generally rely on borrowing. But, of course, borrowing too, eventually reaches the point that it has become so great that it cannot be repaid. What then? Invariably, economic collapse is the outcome. But, why should this be so? Well, when a tipping point is reached, as in jurisdictions like the EU and US, where more than 50% of the public are net recipients, and the other 50% must pay for both themselves and the other 50%, there's no turning back. Those who have been receiving the candy have been told that they're entitled to it, and now they believe it. They will not tolerate the suggestion that the freebies must end, even though no further tax can be reasonably levied. No further funds can be borrowed. Therefore, in every case, the result is systemic collapse, not a gradual tapering off. For thousands of years, governments have sought to appease people with freebies. In ancient Rome, a dole of grain and free entertainment, bread and circuses, helped to usher in the decline of the empire. Like all great empires, it collapsed under a weight of debt and mismanagement. Much of the world is presently at this tipping point. Governments continue to promise benefits that they know will soon come to an end. If history repeats, they will continue repeating this promise right up until the day when the candy stops being dished out. They will then say that no one could have seen this coming. Amongst the public who will be the victims, there will be three general groups. First will be the takers, those who have been the recipients who depended upon the freebies the most. 
they will be the hardest hit, as not only will they lose the freebies, they will have neither the skills nor the imagination to become self-reliant overnight. The second group will be the payers, those whose tax dollars paid for the freebies. They will be hard hit, as the system in which they live and operate is broken down, although they will fare better than the takers. They will have the skills and imagination to rebuild their lives, having previously been productive enough to pay for themselves and others. Third will be the preparers, those who envision the inevitability of the collapse of this system. They most certainly will have the skills and imagination to rebuild their lives, but, additionally, they'll have the means with which to rebuild quickly. They will be the very few who chose the silver bar over the candy and had the wisdom to store the silver in a jurisdiction where it was not likely to be appropriated by a dying empire. Much of the world is now running out of candy. The latest version of bread and circuses is reaching its inevitable end. Replaying the video, we observe Mr. Dice offering chocolate or silver. Each taker looks at him incredulously, then makes the obvious choice, the candy. Each of them gives him a smile. Each is pleased to walk away with the chocolate, but, likely as not, each will have consumed the bar before the day is out, and the benefit of the free buy will be short-lived. After giving out eight bars, Mr. Dice is all out of chocolate, and he presumably goes home. He has no candy, but he does have 10 ounces of silver. Perhaps he owns other silver bars as well, stored in a safer jurisdiction. Each of us has the opportunity to make a choice as to whether we wish to be takers, payers, or preparers. The choice we make may define our future. Note, the US government's bad financial decisions and massive debt levels will cause another financial crisis sooner rather than later. Like most governments that get into financial trouble, we think American politicians will keep choosing the easy option, money printing on a massive scale. This has tremendous implications for your financial security. These politicians are playing with fire and inviting a currency catastrophe. This is a big reason why I think everyone should own some physical gold and silver. Precious metals are the ultimate form of wealth insurance. They have preserved wealth through every kind of crisis imaginable. They will preserve wealth during the next crisis too. But, if you want to be truly crisis-proof, there is more to do. Most people have no idea what really happens when a currency collapses, let alone how to prepare. Comment below with more topic ideas for me to discuss. As a lot of care and hard work goes into this, likes and subscribe, let me know I'm doing a good job. All is appreciated greatly. You may not agree with everything from the content I post. Apply critical thinking and use discernment to come to your own conclusions regarding the content. Thanks for watching this video. This Everything Inside Me channel, see you on the next video. Stay safe and healthy.